On this episode, I make the pistons and piston rings from cast iron round bar. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. The first part I'm going to make today is the pistons. I start work over at the lathe with a piece of cast iron round bar and the three jaw chuck. The first step is to bring it down to size. Once it's close to size, I make my final cut with a little bit of cutting oil. This improves the surface finish. I then give it a final check with a micrometer. And with the part on size, I can remove the sharp corner with a chamfer tool. I give it a quick polish with some memory cloth before test fitting it on the cylinder. With a successful test fit out of the way, it's time to drill and tap a hole for the piston rod. complete, I turn my attention to parting off the piston. I align the parting blade with the end of the part and then zero the digital readout. This then provides a reference for the cut. I'm only using the parting blade as a reference line at this point and I'll come back shortly and finish parting off the piston. But first I have to cut the piston ring grooves. I'm going to use this high speed steel tool off ground. It hasn't been set up in a tool holder yet, so I need to set the height. For this I'm going to use my Edge Technology tool height gauge, which helps accurately set the tool height, using its small level. I can then cut the piston grooves that the piston rings will be located in. These are about 1.5mm deep and 1.5mm wide. These grooves should be slightly oversized for the rings, allowing the steam to get below and behind them. Remove any small burrs with the emery cloth and switch back to the parting blade. Once again I zero the digital breeder on the end of the part before finishing off parting the piston. With the piston complete, I switch my attention to the piston rod. This is made from 4mm stainless steel rod. I've switched from the 3 jaw chuck to an ER32 collet chuck, which is better suited to the small diameter. To cut the thread on the piston rod, I use a standard thread die with the tailstock to provide support. As I cut the thread, I continue to advance the tailstock. Once the thread is cut, I flip the die holder over and use it backwards to cut the shoulder. With 
piston fitted to the rod. I can then remove any surplus material and clean up the face of the piston. complete it's time to remove the piston and rod from the lathe. The next step will be to cut the piston rod to length. I clean up the cut end of the piston rod on the belt grinder. In a future episode, the piston rod will be connected to the crosshead. With that out of the way, let's have a look at the piston rings. Using the same piece of cast iron, I bore out the inside. Slowly increasing the size of the hole, I quickly moved from standard drill bits to larger more taper shank drills. Side roughly to size. I moved to the outside, cutting it down to the finished diameter, which is the same as the inside of the cylinder bore. With that done, I returned to the inside bore, using a boring bar to make final cuts. As I get close, I recheck the board diameter and reset the digital readout to the actual board diameter. I then make one final cut and deburr the edges with some memory cloth. It's then time to part the piston ring off. Once again, I zero the digital readout on the front of the part before making the cut. When parting off, it's always good practice to lock the carriage. With the ring parted off, the next step is to split it. For this I locate it in the vise, and give it a small tap with a hammer. This works surprisingly well. I understand cast iron piston rings are meant to be expanded 15% of their diameter. The way to do this is to pull it open, and place it on a piece of bar. 15% of the diameter works out to about 4mm in my case. So a piece of flat bar did the trick. The next step is to heat it up until it glows red. And when it drops off the bar it's done. For this I'm using a small map gas torch and it will have plenty of heat for the task. Then I let the ring air cool. And now we're ready for assembly. Locating the piston rings in their grooves. The piston rings will be loose to fit now that they've been expanded. So the task doesn't require any special tools. You can just do them with your fingers and they'll snap into place. One note, the joints should be misplaced by 180 degrees. The next task is to fit them into their cylinders. I use some WD-40 to help with the trial fit. This will need to be steam oil in the final assembly. Now back to installing the piston. This took a couple of goes, but I finally got it down. I found getting one side in first was the trick. I 
found the piston cap needed to be installed. Before you move the piston, this keeps the piston straight in the cylinder. I found the pistons freed up once they are well lubricated, but you can definitely tell the piston rings are doing their job as they are well planted against the cylinder walls. I'm really surprised how successfully these worked. This is the first time I've made cast iron piston rings and I really didn't know what to expect. They turned out to be easier to make than I expected, but the hardest thing to part them off at the correct dimension. Now I just have to hope they'll work as well when they get some steam behind them. I'll definitely be making more of these for the outside cylinders. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Catch you next time!